greetings and welcome to another episode of Keys to Your Best Life. I am your host, Maggie Cavanaugh, and I'm here today with a sister in Christ that you are going to love, Stacy Riddle, who is an amazing musical artist that has just stole my heart with her, her music. So Stacy, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. Oh, I'm so honored to have you here because um, we had met at a conference. You were leading worship and I was like, man, these ladies are so talented. And then when I went and listened on an app uh, that a mutual friend, Rachel Ballantyne has, and I listened to your song, I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is so good. <laughs> and then Christmas music came out. Mm -hmm. And that song, Emmanuel, put me on my face. Aww. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna reach out to her. And we're definitely gonna have her on the show because listen, y'all, you have some gifts, you have some talents, you have some things that the Lord has imparted to you. And you may be thinking that you're too young or maybe you're thinking that you're too old. But I can promise you it's neither of that because she's got a powerful testimony of what God has done later in her life. So tell me, how long have you been, uh, well, not performing music, but how long have you been singing unto the Lord and doing these type of things? Uh, I started at a young age, actually, the, the musical gifts and the singing started around 13. I sang my first solo at church and it just started to grow and it was like in me and clearly you know what god was putting in my heart to do <clears throat> so um i really pursued it um through college and i even i did get an education degree because back then um and this was in the early 90s so um women's roles in church were very limited as far sure. as music goes and um so I didn't really see what I could do with music except be famous and that seemed really hard. So I was like, well, I'll be a teacher and I'll just do music on the side. And I did and started writing and um, got connected to Integrity Music who was, that company was in my hometown. I grew up in Mobile, Alabama. And so uh, in my twenties, I started having opportunities with them and then I met my husband and he lived in DC and I left all of that behind when I moved there. True love, yes. true love to, to yes. say, okay, I'm gonna put this on pause. <laughs> but you know, that's also very admirable to stop and pause, to raise your family, you know, get married, raise your family and all of that. And I'm sure God was still working behind the scenes all of those years. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, in, in education, mm -hmm. you were also a teacher. What grade level did you teach? I taught, uh, taught high school biology. She's a brave soul, isn't she? <laughs> High school biology is yes. so scientific. So yep. scientific. I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. So I know that whenever, and it, it's very common. I have another teacher friend that actually I think taught at the same school. You were at PCA? Yes. JoJo, my girlfriend, Johanna. Uh, wow. Yeah, she's my girl. I love, love, love me some JoJo. And so <laughs> she also is an amazing teacher and a great musical artist. So it's, it must be like some sort of thing that y'all have in you, like the gift of education. Do you teach music by any chance? I do. I, um, I have taught, I love to teach. Um, I'm a worship leader and I love uh, to teach young people uh, who have that desire to mm. be a worship leader and just kind of teach them how a band works. And um, I've taught um, high schoolers at a Christian school. We had a worship band class. Oh. And so I used to teach them how to be a worship band and how to work together. And we, then we would, uh, they would lead worship for the chapel services. And so, yeah, I love to mentor. Yes. There's really more of how I see it, you know. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, mentoring, coaching, imparting to the next generation mm -hmm. is so incredibly important. And we were talking before uh, about your daughter being in an all-girl band, and we, I wanna have them on the show, okay? <laughs> I just, you guys look forward to it. Um, but tell me a little bit about that. We're just gonna, we're just gonna showcase them for a moment mm -hmm. because they are doing something that I think is so incredibly important. You know, there's a scripture that says, don't ever let anybody shame you for not, you know, for being too young. Right. And so they are literally teaching the word of God through their music. So tell me a little bit about what they're doing, because I know that you imparted that to your daughter. Yes. Yeah. My daughter, I pushed her into my worship band. In fact, <laughs> the reason she's playing bass today in that band is because I always needed a bass player in my band <laughs> at church and the, where I was leading. And so I bought a bass and I said, Haley, I need you to learn the bass. <laughs> and so she was gifted. I knew she could do it quickly and she picked it right up and she was the bass player in the worship band and she sings and plays keys. And 
So as we moved to Nashville here only in 2020, um, from the DC area, um, and once we moved here, she just has had so mm -hmm. many uh, connections made that really are still surprising all of us, like the way the Lord just opens doors that we never foresee. Um, but yeah, this, so she got connected with a, a young lady who's just godly, um, singer songwriter named Jaron Lagore and uh, Jaron had a ministry of writing songs and singing and and they decided to form a band um, and Jaron's sister Jade is a violin player an oh. incredible violin player in the band and then Haley's the bass player keys and vocals and uh, Sammy plays drums and so wow. the four of them have they call it the band Jaron um, and so that's the, the group they're, they're getting started going and they'll be doing some tour in this summer. And so it's exciting. I'm excited for Haley. It's very exciting mm -hmm. because not only with it being your daughter involved, but just seeing the next generation and after you imparting into them over all the years of your education, because you're not teaching now, right? Right. Okay, so how many years did you teach? I taught off and on since I was out of college. So that's been off and on for 25 years. So you um, got to see lots of changes go on. Yeah, it's a very yeah. rewarding thing. Mm -hmm. I teach, I dibble dabble in teaching a little bit. I teach at RTA on Mondays in the fall. Okay. One class, one topic, public speaking and leadership. Uh -huh. That's it. And uh, But I get a taste of what teachers go through mm -hmm. and it's a very, very uh, rewarding job. But it's also a very challenging job. So mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that you were in the educational system, especially in the D.C. area. Mm -hmm. So moving from Alabama to D.C., mm -hmm. was that a little bit of a culture shock? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it was. I felt like I was in another country, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it was it was a big change. It was hard. Sure. Um, I didn't have family around for most of those years that we lived there 23 years. We raised all of our children there. Wow. It was, it was in the Northern Virginia area. So it was in Warrington, Virginia was the last town we lived in. And, um, but yeah, and uh, you know, there was this part of me that always wanted to come back sure. south. Um, these feel like my people, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it was tough, but um, the Lord, really blessed. He always blesses. He's always faithful. Yes. And um, I tell you, a lot of years during those of being away there and raising my children, and I homeschooled for several years too, so that was full-time um, educating at home. Um, the music dreams and all of those things were always there, and um, and I, I had, I just knew that eventually the Lord would uh, bring something to fruition in that because I knew he wouldn't give me a gift that I didn't fulfill, sure. you know, that passion. So, um, so the opportunity came for us to move to Nashville in 2020 because of COVID. My husband mm -hmm. um, works for the federal government and he commuted to Capitol Hill every day. And um, once everything shut down, he was teleworking and just through a miracle, God allowed him to keep his job full-time right. telework. And we had already made connections here in Nashville with a songwriting community um, that I was involved in and remotely uh, just online. And we just felt like we really wanted to be here. Wow. And so we just picked up and moved and God made a way. He is so faithful whenever yeah. it comes to that. I, I can remember when I came to the Middle Tennessee area back in 05, and it was a bit, it was a little bit of a culture shock for me, and I absolutely love it. Listen, you Tennessee peeps that are watching this local, this is the place to be. Tennessee yeah. is the place to be. But I came from uh, Winter Park, Florida, outside of Orlando area, and it was so different. I mean, everybody mm. was so nice here because I didn't grow up in the South. I grew up in mm. Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. And so I already kind of knew a little bit about the D.C. people, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. so somewhat. And I have a sister that lived in Northern Virginia, and so I'm very familiar with the culture there. But I absolutely, it's like your home. Yes. It's like your home. Mm -hmm. And I love that God brought you here and did, it worked a miracle. So when you got here, now listen, we, I'm not going to make you share your age, but I know that 
you really started releasing your music later in life because you took that sabbatical to raise your kids, which is just absolutely, I love that. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. So what was the first thing that bubbled up in your spirit to release whenever you decided, okay, I'm moving to Nashville. Yeah. Let's do this music thing, so. Well, um, I guess it started bubbling up before we moved here. Like I said, I had connected remotely um, and I was doing a lot of online songwriting with through Zoom writes and with people all over the place. And so I was writing a lot of songs and um, I was leading worship at the church before it shut down for, from COVID, um, the one in Northern Virginia. Um, and just, you know, had this desire to like, what am I gonna do with these songs I'm writing? Yeah. <clears throat> and, and I'm an artist, I mean, I'm a, I'm a singer, I'm a communicator. I, I love to take the song I've written and then like express it, mm -hmm. the message to someone else and really make the impact you know, I wanted to see the whole process through. And so it started when the songwriting began probably seven years ago, just on a lot of writing um, behind closed doors, you know, a lot of songs. And there were some that just rose to the surface. And so once I got to Nashville and I was in this creative place with <laughs> all the resources in the world that, you know, and all these wonderful people and people cheering me on and just a wonderful community with Brave Worship is a, mm -hmm. a community I'm involved in of ladies, you know, songwriting and we cheer each other on. And, um, and I just said, this is the time. Uh, it's time for me to see this through. I yes. just want to see this through. I don't, I, I didn't have any expectations. Sure. It wasn't like I need a record deal. I, I just want to take my songs and see all the way through the process. And so I decided on my uh, 52nd birthday, uh, October of 2020, and I, so I'll share my age because I she feel like- She doesn't look at that, she always. <laughs> Thanks. So whatever you're doing, honey, keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was, I just really wanted to do it on my birthday. So it was like, I was just kind of putting my foot down on that lie that says, you're too old mm. or you're past your prime or it's too late. And um, I just, and I had a big party. I'm not one to celebrate myself either. I've never had a big birthday party, but I threw a big party and I wanted everybody there because I wanted them to know too that I, I want you to see mm. what God is doing and what God will do when he gives you a passion, yes. you have to see it through. He will see it through and he will make a way for it to happen. Oh my goodness, that is yeah. so beautiful. Absolutely so beautiful. So the song that you released, was that Faster? Faster, yeah, that was the first uh, release. It was in October of last year. Now when I heard that song, Okay, I totally related to it, one, because as you can tell by the way I talk, I do everything fast, okay? <laughs> and so there's been times and seasons in my life where I've tried to outrun God or I've got in front of God or, you know, whatever the case may be. But that song, it sounded like there was a story behind it. Is there a story behind that song? It Actually, we had written it um, for a specific movie. Okay. And it was written about an actual prisoner who had gone to prison and um, escaped from prison. Mm. And God s had an encounter with him and said, I can't use you while you're on the run. Ooh. So you have to go and you have to go back to prison because that I'm going to use you, but you have to go back. And so, um, so we wrote it for that story. Um, and so it, it is very powerful testimonial it story is. that we can't outrun God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's so good. So was it used for the film or did God just turn around and use it for something else? Because that happens, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, definitely. We, we can set out to do things, but, you know, God. So, well, it became my first release. So I look at it like <laughs> if that's all the purpose was, then it's we'll interesting. It. Um, another person that's involved in that same music circle that you're in, Lisa, she has a similar story about her recent song mm -hmm. that came out that it was written for a Western. And so you never know what God's going to use. So don't, don't write off something that God might be birthing through you because it doesn't look the way you think it should look. Because I know many times in my life, there's been things where it looks one way and God had a whole completely different mm -hmm. plan with that. Yeah. So I love sure. that. So did that lead you into doing 
doing the Christmas album or was that something you did before and just released? Um, I had not written the the Christmas Emmanuel um, yes. when I released Faster. I had decided that I wanted to re I I wanted to kind of continue the release process uh, because it it felt like this I'm walking in what God is wanting me to do right now and right now I need to keep releasing music. So um, I. I ended up just, I had a write with one of my writer friends named Sarah that I write with a lot. Uh, Sarah and Dave, we wrote and that day we were writing and it just sounded like this mm -hmm. could be a Christmas song. Like I, I wanna release this for Christmas. And so when we finished it, it just, I just knew. I was like, this one is special. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the producer that I worked with, Sam Hart really, um, is a he's a godly man and he took that song and really added the instrumentation that so beautiful. it's just a beautiful anointed song and I know God really used it a lot during the Christmas season so it's, he did it, it's been, and he's still doing yeah. it today yes. on the way here uh, the crew we all rode together you know it was a girl's day out kind of thing we're going to work but we're going to have fun while we're doing it and that is literally what my friend Paula said she said that song is so anointed and it is and I think it's because it reminds us God is with us he's yes. in us he's in us with the good the bad the ugly all the things that we go through in life he is always there and always you know mm -hmm. I just absolutely I love it. I love it. So listen, don't limit it to Christmas, okay? Um. <laughs> you know, I, I'm glad you said that because I actually, when we wrote it, we were writing it as a worship song. Mm. And, and we were writing it specifically towards the name Emmanuel. And it just so happens that that is the one that everyone wants to make those songs, the Christmas songs. Right. But you know what? The Bible didn't say we can only talk about Emmanuel at Christmas. That's right. right. That's it, right. Emmanuel <laughs> means God with us. And the song was written as a worship song. Um, but I really wanted to make it one of those worship songs that could be sung all year, you know. Um, so I, I'm glad you brought that up because it is it, true because mm -hmm. we, you know, we want when that just the way that we with our intellect where we want to put God in a box. It's mm -hmm. like Emmanuel. Oh, it's a Christmas song, you know, mm -hmm. and so no, no, we get to worship mm -hmm. him all the time, day in and day out. I absolutely love that. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you were mentioning the songwriting process mm -hmm. and the collaboration with other songwriters. So during, you know, and I don't want to really we won't go into COVID. That's just so so. <laughs> So yesterday, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but working in that environment digitally, because I work with a lot of people from all over and I have found it to be so interesting to work with people from other areas. What was that experience like with it? Was that new? Had you done that prior to COVID? No, I started uh, doing a lot of Zoom writing during COVID and um, but now it's a very common thing. It's <laughs> continued and I love it because now I, I can write with people in England. I can write with people. So we'll have three people on a Zoom write from all over the place uh, writing. And so it, we're not limited, you know, to when our schedules line up uh, in person. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing, the way God is connecting the body uh, yes. through that technology, really. Yes, mm -hmm. I absolutely love it, especially um, the unification of the body mm -hmm. and, you know, crossing over not only geographic lines, but denominational lines mm -hmm. and, and just a heart of people coming together and bringing all of that creativity. You know, I had, uh, I used to make this horrible statement over my life and in, in a previous episode, we were talking about the power of life and death mm -hmm. and I would make statements like, I'm not creative. And then I was like, because I thought, oh, I'm not a songwriter, I'm not a painter. And mm -hmm. I put this whole creative mindset in what I I thought it was supposed to look like. Mm. And boy, is that a big mistake. We are mm -hmm. sons and daughters of the Most High, the creator of the universe. And yeah. yet, how could we not be creative? Right, we're made in his image. Yes, exactly. Right? He is a creator. He is the creator. Yes. So we are creators. So when you get together with all of this just creativeness and all of this flow, how do you, how do you guys even harness that, I guess, is, I don't even know if that's the right word, but how do you just flow? What does it look like? Can you just maybe walk us through what a, a, a collaboration of worship leaders or songwriters yeah. looks like? Yeah. Yeah, we get together. We probably spend the first, uh, it depends too, like if, how well you know them or if sure. you don't know them at all, but sure. we definitely want to spend time getting to know each other and um, 
and just uh, getting easy with you know our our conversation and <clears throat> we kind of go into like you know what's on your heart what has mm -hmm. God been speaking to you and it, it so many times turns into Bible study I mean we're yeah. we're talking about what the Lord is showing us the scriptures that we've been in mm -hmm. and through that usually something rises to the top of like yes I can I've that's what I'm feeling or that sounds like something we could write about and uh, and then maybe someone has well I wrote these lyrics this these couple of lines and and because um, sometimes there are writers who are really gifted with lyrics, but there may be other writers who just hear a lot of melodies. Um, and so I, I love melody. And so um, my friend Sarah loves lyrics and she'll bring lyrics and I'll say, oh, I'm hearing this tune mm. that goes with those lyrics. And so that's how we'll, so I'm always at the piano when we write. Okay. She, you know, she, we have our computers and, and I'll just start playing something and trying to sing her lyrics and then we it just kind of can go from there so what a beautiful yeah. mesh of creativity mm -hmm. to give God the glory and everybody bring it I love how you said that it brings everything to the surface because that's how we flow mm -hmm. you know we're all trying to hear from God even right now in our conversation you know mm -hmm. we're listening to what is the Lord saying and what's going through my life and how does scripture apply and it's it's an it's very inspirational for me as the person on the other side of the music that's listening to it and using it as a way to enter into a deeper relationship with the Lord and to honor him and exalt his name to know that that is being birthed, not just from that place of, hey, I like the scripture, you know, you guys are literally praying and talking yes. and digging deep. And that's probably why so many of those songs have depth. Mm -hmm. and anointing yeah. is because it comes from that place of surrendering. God, I hear this, but you're saying this mm -hmm. type of thing. Is that mm -hmm. kind of how it flows? Definitely. I love and it. And then there's other songs that come, like I lead uh, worship every week at the Franklin Prayer House on um, Fridays from, two, uh, from 12 to 2. So for two hours of continuous worship, many nice. times um, I'll begin to sing out something that I'm just feeling in my spirit that just a scripture that kind of mm -hmm. leads into a song and sometimes those can become those songs so it comes from a moment of, of prayer and just actual worship mm -hmm. where it's a spontaneous moment of mm -hmm. worship and uh, but then I feel like that song holds that moment it holds that experience yes. in it and it translates when it's even when it's released, you know, I believe that about the power of music and the power of the song. Absolutely. I'm very mm -hmm. familiar with that. It's almost like a harp and bowl yeah. type of thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're very connected with the Gap House of Prayer in Murfreesboro. So mm -hmm. you have to go there sometime. Okay. You'll have to definitely. Susan, if she finds out about you, look out. <laughs> She's going to be trying to get you on the calendar. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but it is so true because sometimes, you know, we'll hear something in the spirit and we'll mm -hmm. speak it out. And it's like, it's almost like saying it once is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's just like we want to camp out there and just, it, allow the Lord to flow through us. And it's such a beautiful thing. We had the opportunity today to hear uh, Psalms, I think 103 mm -hmm. is uh, that you were singing. And what yeah. a beautiful, was that birth? That there? was birth at the prayer house. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Did you guys record mm -hmm. there? Or did you take it into the studio? We actually record there. Okay. Um, the uh, Ryan Hall runs the Franklin prayer house and okay. he is a producer and a worship leader. And so he just brought the equipment right into the prayer room and this is his heart, you know, oh. to, to just capture the songs that are being birthed at the prayer house. So every song that's ever released was birthed in, the, in that room. I love it. I and love recorded it. in that room. You know, some of the most powerful songs um, that I personally worship to were birthed from a place like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't, and I love the whole collaboration of songwriting and I love the spontaneous part of it. And it really takes all of it mm -hmm. because we, you know, again, we can't put God in a box, you know, like mm -hmm. it was just a, Emmanuel's a Christmas song. No, it's not a Christmas song. Anything that has to do with him should be celebrated every day yeah. and, and glorified every day. So. Oh my goodness, this is just so fun. I've always had a heart for music. Not that um, I, I don't sing. I mean, I do. 
it's a joyful noise to yeah. the Lord, but it's super painful for everybody else. <laughs> However, I have a brother who is a singer songwriter. Mm -hmm. And so I've watched him over the years and I'm just blown away about all the stuff that comes up out of people mm -hmm. and where it comes from. So I'm, it's interesting to hear about the Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. So I love it. I love it. So what's coming down the pike for you? What do you got going on? Anything right now? Are you working on a new project or some new songs? Yeah, I actually have a release coming probably mid-May. Okay. Um, we're finalizing it right now and it's called If You Only Knew. And Ooh. it, yeah. And so basically it's about it's, it's saying, if you only knew my story, you'd know there is hope for everyone. The fact that really we, most of us all have a story. We all have a story that probably no one else knows about. Right. But if we can be, have opportunities to be more vulnerable and tell our stories, then we can really reach people who think that we have it all together and we never had a moment of pain or heartache and they can hear our story and relate to know mm -hmm. they're not alone and mm -hmm. there is hope for them to be. It gives them Where permission. God, yeah. Permission mm -hmm. to be real. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all, listen, I don't have a physical mic here, but I got this right here. And if I could, and I won't, but I would drop the mic right now. <laughs> this is so true because when we are transparent, you know, people look at us and all those church people. And I remember thinking that before I knew the Lord, I remember mm -hmm. thinking all those holy church people, they got it all together, but everybody has a story. Everybody has something from their past and God takes all of it and he turns it into this beautiful mosaic piece of art, mm -hmm. all of our brokenness. So if you guys are watching this and you want to know more about Jesus, reach out to us. We will be happy mm -hmm. to talk to you about him. Uh, you can find us on all the social media platforms and so forth. But if you can leave the audience with the key and you've given us a whole keychain, but if you can leave <laughs> the audience with the key, what would you tell them? I would say it's never too late. There's always hope and don't get ever, ever give up on a dream. Amen. That is so good and so important. Well, we want to thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much, Stacy. It's always a joy to get to hang out with a sister in Christ and just hear the heart behind the message and what God is saying and doing. So I appreciate you being here in the studio with us today. Thank you. So it's a great opportunity. And if you'd like to know more about her music, you can go and find her on Stacy riddlemusic.com. If you have any problem finding it, reach out to me and I will send it to you as well. So we want to thank you for being here with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice in that. We want to thank you for being here. Your time is valuable and please be encouraged that God is for you. And, and like Stacy said, it is never too late. Until next time, God bless you.